just two words on me. I was brought up in Switzerland, and as you know, everybody brought up there in Switzerland with a cow. This is, of course, not true. It's a lie, but it is maybe the last lie that I'm telling to you. Um, but still, I like cows. And um, in the meantime, I'm working in the city science lab. I just want to tell you about that also because it has not, not so much, not, on one hand, not so much to do with the uh, with um, art on one hand. And I'm, go I'm going to t talk about you much more about the Rimini protocol. But I want to talk also that my, my other part is a is a scientist part and I'm working at the city science lab in Hamburg. This is uh, at the Hafen City University, I'm sitting here in one of the spaces and um, we do a lot of uh, things that are uh, bringing actually the di digital things and the digitalization uh, towards the participation and the urban planning. So it has a kind of a parallel track of what we're doing here is seeing what kind of art doing in the urban thing is also the uh, track of, of their, let's see how the digitalization can uh, be used for bring more participation into urban planning. This is just a side kit. If you're interested, you can contact me at any time. But I'm going to talk to you about Rimini protocol. Rimini protocol are mainly the three guys on the red, uh, right side, starting from the left in the blue jacket is Stefan Kegi, in the middle is Helga Taug, and Daniel Wetzel is uh, the third one. Um, some of you might know him, they have been in Riga sometimes. Uh, actually, the, it was not the first time for me also to be in Riga, but the second time that I came was actually to see a show of them that they were staging in this building that some of you might know at the moment. I don't know what's the use of that building now. At that moment, it was completely empty. And during the Homo Novus uh, Festival in 2014, uh, Rimini Protocol staged a kind of a tour in this building and you as an audience member you just got this kind of a paper and you and you see on the left part here you have to find uh, in these floors that are very empty there was nothing inside you you were looking for uh, some number it is ministry of uh, uh, foreign affairs now ah you see okay still. and um uh, it was it actually it was a, not a, as a, as a, as many of these festival productions it, it was not a normal theater play. So Rimini Protocol stage I'm going to read it now a little bit. Stage the house a whole house a house with a long history a house that was once a bank some years a military headquarter and seven and for some years a town hall as well. A building that was empty then with no furniture in it, only the walls, the doors and the floors were left and some of the lights were not removed. Rimini Protocol, of course, as always with local assistance of the festival, searched for persons that had spent some of their lifetime in this building, asked them to tell about their story in the very empty room and of that building. And of course, not only of that building, but of the time and uh, of the city. As a visitor or theater goer, I got a small piece of cardboard that I showed you. And um, with a number stamped on it indicated the room. I was supposed to go there and in this very room, a person was telling me and only me for exactly five minutes their story. When time was over, this protagonist stamped me a next number on my routing card and sent me off the way through the endless corridors. Here's some of the images and some of the people. And if you spot me very well on the left image, you get five points at the end. Um, strolling through an unknown place like this one, it has something similar to that of strolling through an unknown city. Attending the Cameriga performance have one string, one thing strongly in common with that strolling in a city. The spectator is moving around and co-produces in a specific way the impression of the city or that very play that he or she is watching. This collaborative mode of perception, I would argue, is a very contemporary culture that we may find in many digital tools, it comes back to digitality, 
and apps as much as it is something that we know from practice in our common behavior in public sphere and what i think is a very very strong and important to to produce a vanity in every kind of level and for every quarter or difficult places i want to start with a drawing from 1842 where we saw a modern man yes that's a modern man well dressed standing with his hands in the pockets of the long baggy but still elegant trousers, shirt and coat, a stick under his left arm, a hat on his head, his face tiled towards the sun. The drawing I am referring to is made by Paul Gavarni, Gavarni, sorry, Gavarni, and he's called Le, Le Flaneur, the Flaneur. Much ink has been spilled over this drawing figure, this aimless walk of the 19th century Parisian streets, as he was a central figure in literary works by Poe, Joyce, Baudelaire, Dublin, Proust. This romantic figure takes us, the readers, by the hand for a stroll into the city and shares all, the dis to all, the, all he discovers with us. Like I did poorly with my description of Riga and the play. But the flaneur does much more than just discover secrets in the arcades of early modernity and cultivate his idleness. He is the prototype of a modern urbanist, I would say. A new sort of city goer as there were and many and are many types around. The flaneur dwells into the streets with cool but curious eyes. He is the constant observer of the ever-changing spectacle that emerges around him. Do you, can you follow me voice-wise and speed-wise? No answer. Everybody left. Everything is fine. Everything is great. I'm going on. Thank you. <laughs> this elegant man, I'm still talking about this flaneur, with his stick standing still for a moment and looking up in the air. Where is he looking and what is he seeing? That is, might be one of the questions that you might answer. I'm sorry I didn't, I was not able to put another answer into that, but I would be, I would love to know from you, please just tap in, what is this person looking at and what is he seeing? Is it a bird, a tree in blossom, a lady behind a window? So if you can do that, that would be great. And actually, what I want to say, it is not of importance what he is looking at, but how that looking at whatever it is constitutes his specific experience and makes him important enough to become a sujet for painters, writers, and scholars. In other words, this flaneur is both a spectator and an actor in a play called The Flaneur. And as J.S. Nottebaum notes, flaneurs are artists even if they do not write because they are witnessing that what is going on in the city, they are the eye, the protocol, the memory, the judgment, the archive. In Flaneurs, the city becomes aware of itself. It is double action, this double action of Flaneurship that is of interest. By walking through the streets and collecting impressions, the Flaneur is constantly producing a story of his lived experience while being an actor in the play he's currently watching. Also, the French philosopher Jacques Rancière is not voting for theatrical actions that force the audience to become physically active. He describes the constant activity of the spectator, even in a classical setting of theater. This is a long quote, but I will read it to you and you can read it, by the way. The spectator also acts, his first point. Then he observes, selects, compares, interprets. He links what he sees to a host or other things that he has seen on other stages in other kinds of places. He composes his own poem with the elements of the poem before her or him. His, he participates in the performance by refashioning it in his own way, by drawing back, for example, from the vital energy that is 
supposed to transmit in order to make it a pure image and associates this image with a story which he or she has read or dreamt, experienced or invented. And number three, this is a crucial point. Spectators see, feel and understand something as much as they compose their own poem, as in their way do actors or playwrights, directors, dancers or performers. I would argue that a specific mode of walking in the city, the flaneur mode, I would call it, comes very close to what Rancière would call emancipated spectatorship. The flaneur is not just an observer or passive spectator of a finished play. He is more a co-producer of that very city life. He is in a mode that is described as a mode of experiencing the spectator, the spectator of the city in which the viewer assumes the position of being able to observe, command and participate in this spectacle all at the same time. Walter Benjamin describes 1935 in his sketches of the Arcades projects of Flaneur as an active producer of the urban scenery he lives in. If the city opens up to him as a landscape, even as it closes around him as a room. For Benjamin, the city is not a fixed thing anymore, but a space that changes its appearance and functionally constantly depending on the action and choices of its visitors, users, inhabitants and actors. And the city even becomes a strange and unknown place. To the flaneur, his city even if he happened to be born here, is no longer a native ground. It represents for him a theatrical display, an arena. Benjamin proposes to see the city as theater that is set up and used by actors, which in this case are flaneurs, but increasingly all members of urban society in general. In other words, in the city that works here as a medium, it is the city goer, the person, the active and emancipated spectator from Ancier, that turns the urban landscapes into a theater of social action, a theater whose setting is a street, as Brecht said, or a performance. The assemblage of collected imp impressions are merged into a texture of experiences, a storyboard of the film that we live at the same time. Or more generally, and in the words of the human geographer Dorian, Dorian Massey, we are constantly, sorry, that's not this one, no, it's missing. We are constantly making and remaking the time spaces through which we live our lives. Massey not only discusses the inseparable relations of space and time, but in her core argument points to the production of identity through the concept of relational aspects of space. The very performative notion of space that is not a fixed thing to walk through, but more a mean or a medium in which things and settings becomes possible has been discussed by so many scholars such as Lefebvre, Sartreau, Merleau-Ponty, Deleuze, Gattari, and I do not intend to dig deeper into relational space theories of politics of space. However, it is obvious that these approaches to space and space productions have an effect not only on how we receive space as such, but actually from the way we behave in that space and even what and how we see and understand things, objects, situations and actions in that space. In other words, the space we produce will structure the lifetime we spend in it. This is a highly performative approach to describing space and its narrative. And you see, this is more the approach that I'm going to tell you about you is about using artistic strategies to go for, do something that's called urbanity. The relational space production gets a kind of dramaturgical agency for the play that is called my life. Okay, last point, and then, then we come to some some images. Recalling our flanner as a starting point and looking back to Camariga, the staging of a house in the city, then we might see some parallels, especially 
the collaborative positions the spectators are set in. In this way, how the spectator or the city goer is asked to participate in the show, in the city, that he, she is watching or visiting. It is, as Claire Bishop describes it, the shift from an audience that enjoys its Sub, that enjoys its subordination to strange experiences devised for them by an artist to an audience that is encouraged to be a co-producer of the work. To conclude my journey through different sociological, philosophical and other academic books, and could, one could argue that in the main effect of programming theater and urban space is exactly this, to encourage and support the collaborate efforts of producing and changing common urban spheres. In times of shut and lockdowns in many cities and democrat democracies under pressure, this form of theater and art constitutes a very high political practice in its core sense. As David Harvey points it out, and I'm always, almost always finishing with this quote because I love it so much, the right to the city is far more than the individual liberty to access um, resources. It is a right to change ourselves by changing the city. It is moreover a common than an individual right. And the freedom to make and remake our cities and ourselves is, I want to argue, one of the most precious yet most neglected of our human rights. In this sense, it's more a political and cultural theoretical input that I wanted to let deliver here. Seeing that many of your program goes already in that direction and even beyond, I think it will fit very well. And I'm going now turning to some of the images and somebody needs to stop me as soon as we come to an end. I just want to give you some images from productions from Rimini Protocol that have some, somehow impacted the theoretical approaches. 100% City, of course, you know that because it's also it was in Riga and in many other places at the moment, more than 40 places. Rimini Protocol just had its 20th anniversary this year. And you see some of the images that uh, will come out with a, a jubileum book that will come out before the end of this year, I hope. Let's finger cross, and uh, uh, you will get some uh, insights of some of the pages, the first ever. So this is uh, some images from uh, Riga in 2014. The, the, the construct here is very simple. It says the city are the people, and we represent the city on the city stage by having 100 people on stage from the city and every person represents exactly one percent of the inhabitants of the city one percent in uh, different criteria so you see here research criteria there are some are male or female so which this is our search criteria is what you see here on the middle right from melbourne some of them are and um, from what which county do you come from and and the age is a search criteria and you make the casting through these criteria. Here you have the criteria again, the first page of it. So this is how we are looking within one year. We are searching for these people, and then we make a kind of a statistical theater play on stage. So this is the book that I was uh, telling you that will come out before Christmas. And uh, it shows all the work of Rimini Protocol. And I'm showing you just, I put it, I put it, uh, I, collected it in 10 different kind of works that Rumini Protocol does, and one is called Urbanities. And I'm just showing you some of the pages that are showing you um, shows that were done in Urbanities. And you see already that a lot has to do with city goers, of, of course. Kolkuta is one of the first important ones where a call center in Kolkuta, where you, what you can see on the left page, is guiding you with this kind of PowerPoint slides on the right side through a boat through your city, in this case, Berlin, via a phone call, a normal phone call of two hours. So people who do not know your city will guide you through your city. Next one is Cargo Sophia. It is a reconstruction of a truck, what you see on the left page, what was formerly used to transport pigs 
Now you sit in it, it was reconstructed as or constructed as a theater and you sit on it and you drive with this truck through the city and the city becomes the theater stage outside of the window through which you are driving. So the driver is a part of that city goer and you are the audience are a kind of a guided and driven flaneur. Also that worked through a lot of, of cities. Another one is you're guided with a kind of a, a, a mobile phone and you are guided through a city and you finally you find yourself in a choir piece and acquire rehearsal. Another one is a kind of a um, headphone play that is located to specific places in the city. In this, kind, in this way it is a, um, and there are archive materials, audio archive materials from the uh, Stasi, the state security of the East German um, countries and they, they survived a lot of people and we put what you can see on the right page and um, we put some of these phone calls that were made into the centrals of the of the Stasi back to the to the places where they were observed so you can walk through the east berlin and when you're close to that cloud you can listen to these files another one is remote x it's a guided also a guided audio tour and um, dealing with kind of ai and what is a group and um it's very site specific, brings it to different places. And uh, it, it also has been in more than 40 cities all over the world. What you can see is some of them places where they have been. It goes, it, it also asks you to do something. So you, sometimes you're a critical mass and you're stopping the traffic. Sometimes you're sitting on a, on a stair that is there and you are then constituting that as a theater. Another one with the same track that we already said, we can also do other shows, what we did. And one of the last one is just done in Manchester and then also in St. Petersburg and will be in October in Cologne. And um, it is a kind of a march that you do in a small group and that brings, so there are the, uh, the group of 10 groups and they were brought together and then gives, uh, comes together to the place and have a kind of a symphony there staged. So these are a lot of uh, some of the um, uh, productions that I wanted to spot on you. Of course, it was very much little time to do that, but it was important for me to share with you also some of my thoughts or the thoughts that we have behind that or the thoughts that we, that brought us to invent things like that or thoughts that came out after we in invented stories. You, you, uh, you, you made everything on time. Good. Uh, however, we also took the luxury and uh, ask the question, what is the flaneur looking at? So you remember oh. you asked. It. So I'm sharing the screen now. I hope you can see it. Can you see it, Emmanuel? Yes, I see it. So these are the answers people gave and you can still, um, you can still add some. And uh, yeah, so what do you think? What, what do you see here? Yeah, it is, the, it is the interesting point is that we are always thinking, well, of course, I manipulated you and asked you, what are you looking at? But as I already said then in the, in the very first time, maybe it's more not interesting what we are looking at, or when we are talking about cities and urban planning, maybe it's not interesting on how the things look at at the end or what are we building or how it is constructed, what, what is there. But it is, the, it is the mode of being there and the mode of, of um, how to how to deal with things and how to look at things that is maybe important and makes um, new new visions and new productions coming up. All right. So does does anyone have a question to Emmanuel? I actually have a question regarding the future. What is the project you are working on next that is not related to one that you partly, partially mentioned? And is it related to the post-pandemic world we are now living in? Of course. No, uh, um, the funny thing is that we, that we had the concept ready and finished before, before the pandemic started. 
and it fits very well to it. And uh, it, it came out because we, we were somehow tired of flying so much and traveling so much and transporting our, our, um, our, our production from one place to the other. And of course, this unbelievable amount of flights that we always see at the end at, of the year and see how much it is. So we thought we should change or do something against that. So what we do is a, is a, is a theater show that uh, will take place in many, many places of the world, but nothing and nobody will have to travel for that. And there's no material transport going from one place to the other. There is no person transport from one place to the other. And there should not be any production to do, to do that. And how is it done? We will see, we call it, we call it a conference and we call it a conference of the absence. So all the people that will take part there and give their speech will not be there. But of course, we also not use Zoom products. Okay. So thank you very much for your presentation. And uh, thanks actually, thanks very much for all your artistic work. And, and of course, looking forward to see your next project in Riga Tool. We have, I hope, one question that is Lever saying that's really interesting. So <laughs> it's not a question, it's rather a compliment. 